This video has been a long time coming. I really love watching haul videos, I love making haul videos, and I was going to release this video months ago, and then I just kept buying more games, so I figured I'd just do a mega spring haul of a bunch of game and accessory pickups that I've done over the past few months. Basically, since I got back from Europe is when I got all of this stuff. <laughs> so hi there everybody, my name is Alex, aka Quality, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So I mentioned this in my recent DS collection video that I've really gotten back into collecting older games, particularly for the DS, and over the past few months, I've just kind of been really getting into going to retro game stores, picking up things that I've wanted, making a list so I can have kind of a curated collection for these systems that I really, really appreciate. And it's been a really, really, really fun time. I've of course also picked up some new releases and I have some fun accessories that I want to show off as well, but I've been so excited to film this video and now that I finally have everything and I, I really swear if I if I try to get any more stuff for this specific video, this is gonna be like way too long <laughs> of a whole video. So I had to cut myself off, but let me know after watching this, do you guys prefer longer haul videos or maybe shorter, more frequent haul videos? I'd love to know because that's really gonna help me determine the best course of action for these later on in the channel. So it'd be super duper helpful. But before we get into all of the games, I really wanna talk about some really cool accessories that I was able to pick up throughout that time as well. If you've been around on the channel for a while, you know I am a very big fan of Tom Talk and all of their cases for their varying electronics, specifically their Nintendo Switch cases. I was very fortunate to receive one for a previous haul and I also keep my Switch in one pretty much all the time. I took this with me to Europe and it was wonderful. And so the folks at Tom Talk were so sweet and they wanted to send me more cases and I am just so overwhelmed with their generosity. It was so sweet. So I have three Tom Talk cases to show you. One is very different and then two are similar to the case that I already have my Switch in, but are two of their brand new colors that you can get. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna start with the first one they sent me, which is actually a bigger case. So after they saw my travel video where I talked about Tom Talk cases, they were really, really sweet and wanted to send me an even slightly bigger case for travel. So this is the one that they sent me. It's awesome. I really, really love the gray. And you can see too, it's pretty thick. And we'll get to what's in the center of it too. Here's mine for reference. These are the nice, uh, the slim cases, which are really, really great. This one is nice and thick and fits a little bit more stuff too, but it's still classy. Like that's what I really appreciate about Tom Talk cases is even though like, you know, they're meant to be resistant. They're meant to carry a lot of stuff. They look so classy. They still look so classy. So I'm really happy about it. Oh, this is exactly what I was hoping for. I actually have not opened this case yet, but this looks so nice. So <laughs> this is so cool. So here's the inside just when you open it up. So you have a huge pocket on the top, which is perfect for fitting a pro controller in there which I'll actually grab mine in a second, but it's nice and elastic and it kind of folds over itself so it's not gonna like come out or anything like that. But then the bottom is also really cool. So it has the super soft little material here, but this is a stand that you can put your Switch on. And of course there's a flap for games. It has a little kickstand that you can put your Switch on and play it in the case, which I think is so cool, especially for travel. Because, you know, when you're traveling on a plane or a train, like, you'll have a little table that you can put your Switch on. But for me, who has an original Switch, I just have that measly little kickstand, which isn't always the most safe, especially when there's, like, turbulence on a plane or something like this. This is really, really secure and really nice. And again, like, I, I just love the material they use for these cases. They're so soft and I know, Oh, oh, I miscounted. You can actually put 24 games in this case. I didn't see that there was more on the other side. Oh, that's awesome. So you really can put a bunch of stuff in here. Okay, so here it is with my Switch and my Pro Controller at top. I have wanted a case that I can fit my Pro Controller in for so long. Cause usually when I'm like traveling short distances, I don't really have anywhere to put it in my bag. So I just kind of throw it in there. But especially with my Tears of the Kingdom Pro Controller, I want to keep it a little more protected. And this is perfect. Oh my gosh, I love this case. This is awesome. And again, as you always have to do the knocking test, that is heavy. That is sturdy. 
This is really protected and I love it. That's one thing that I can also say about TomTok cases. And I'm being entirely honest here. It's like, I don't think I've ever had a more protective case for my Switch. And it's like a case that I can really trust. Literally, my Switch fell out of my bag the other day while it was in my TomTok case, and it was perfectly secure. It was perfectly safe, everything was fine, and it fell from a, a pretty high distance too. So quality is so, so good on these. I really, really love this case. And this, I love my Slim case too, but I think, especially for going shorter distances where I'm gonna be taking maybe more games or a pro controller, like this is a great case for something like that. And for traveling longer distances too. Especially if I'm not planning on bringing a dock, but I still want like a pro controller like going over to a friend's house for a game night or something this is perfect this is absolutely perfect so this case is a win this case is an absolute win <laughs> but we still have two other cases and these are so freaking cute so these are pretty much the same as these ones the tom talk fancy cases i love mine so much but they released several new colors and they were so sweet and sent me two of them <laughs> so we'll go with the pink one first um, this one, I didn't know I was getting this one, and this was really, like, just a sweet surprise, but it's so cute. So you have this light pink on the front and a dark pink on the back, which is really cool. It absolutely reminds me of maybe our favorite pink puffball, uh, Kirby, a little bit. And same kind of deal. Oh, silica gel, silica gel, oh no. <laughs> and it's the same kind of deal where it has a nice sturdy bottom, nice soft little top, and room for 10 games on the top. The reason I love these slim cases is they conform to the shape of the Switch so well. And so these also fit not only the normal Switch, but they do also fit OLEDs too. Like there's just enough space where it's, your, your normal Switch is never gonna feel like it's about to fall out, but your OLED also doesn't feel squished either. So they're really, really, really nice, but they're just so cute. They're just so cute. And so this also does the same thing that my other one does where you can turn this into a little wristlet, which I just always like, you know, different ways to carry a sturdy case. So that's super good. This one's really cute. Like I'm not usually a big pink person, but again, I saw this as kind of like, this would be a really cute kind of Kirby themed case. And then finally you have the one that I was most excited for. And that is this turquoise and gold one. And look at the print on it. It's very, you know, it's giving Tears of the Kingdom vibes 100%. And it's so cool. I love the colors on this. It really fits in super well with all of the Tears of the Kingdom things as of late. And also just if you're a Zelda fan, like these are really, really good colors to match with any kind of thing like this. But I think this would look really, really good with the Zelda OLED, to be honest. I wish I had TJ's here so I could, <gasps> wait a second, I didn't know this was a thing. <gasps> what? Okay, this is cool. This is cool. I didn't know this. It comes with little patches that you can put on the outside. <laughs> and they're they're very like Tears of the Kingdom styled. Like they look like the glyphs from the game. And that's really cute. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. That's so cool. That is so neat. I didn't know these came with that. <gasps> That's so cool. And they just have like a, a little adhesive back so you can just kind of stick them on there. That is so cool. That is so cool. And there's a bunch. So there was the one I just showed you that matched the case. There's this one that's a little darker green and white, a lighter green and gold. And this, this one's cool. It's like a teal and purple. That's so cool. I didn't know this came with that. That's so cool. Wow. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. That is so neat. <laughs> That's so cool. But yeah, I obviously recommend any of these cases. They're so nice. And again, like TomTalk just has such good quality. They also have a thing where if you take the serial number of the case that you buy and put it on their website, you get a two year warranty on these cases too, which is just, you, you never know. Like I know I can trust them, but it's nice to have that backup just in case. So if something happens, like, you know, something tears and it's no longer able to protect your switch in the fullest, then you have the warranty on it. So that's really, really cool. So really big thank you to TomTalk for sending me all of these. I am in love. I'm absolutely in love. And just to kind of show off my Switch in this one, I also didn't even realize when I opened it either that this is turquoise. Everything else is gold, but that's turquoise. I love that change. I love this case. 
I love this case. This is so freaking cute. And of course, if you want to get your own Top Talk cases, the links are in the description below. I really, really recommend their products, not just for Switch stuff, but they have a bunch of other electronic cases that are just really high quality. And they're also just so sweet. They're just so nice. <laughs> so Tom Talk gets two thumbs up. I adore them. Now I have one more little set of accessories to show off before we get into the games. And this is a really special one. So my very dear and wonderful friend Audrey has an Etsy store named Augie Art. There's the logo on the little box right there. And she works with polymer clay and she has beautiful handmade earrings, but she also just recently started doing switch charms and other little charms. So I wanted to order some for my switch. They're really, really cute. I'm so excited to open that. I have not opened this, but just again, look at that logo. It's so cute. It's so cute. So I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, she sent me an extra one. What the heck? <laughs> That's so sweet. So I got three switch charms and then I just got another charm because I actually, I wanted a charm to match that gray Tom Tot case. I like putting charms on my cases and I think it's cool. So we'll start with this one. So this is so cute. It's a little chickadee. I love birds. And I thought with the gray, it matched the Tom Tot case really, really, really well. They're so cute. And so you can get the charms in a long chain or like a short chain if you wanted it for like a bracelet or something. I went with a long chain just because I thought that would be better for the case. And yeah, they're just so cute. Like, the oh, they're just so pretty. The textures and the paint, it's just, it's so, so nice. I'm gonna put this on the case. There it is. It's so cute. It's just a cute little charm. So then I can like pull it while I zipper and stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's so cute. I think it matches the case really, really, really well. I love it. I might get a few more for this case specifically just because it's so big, but it's so cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, and now the Switch Charm. So I ordered two, but she sent me an extra one. So I got this cute little strawberry because I thought it would go really, really well with that pink hard shell case that I have for my Switch. I don't have it on there now, but it's, it's really, really cute and it's so detailed. And then I also got this little lemon, <laughs> which is really cute. I thought this was a good summertime one. And actually I think it goes kind of well with the joy kinds I have on my Switch right now. So I'll put this one in a second, but it's so cute. I love that the leaf is like a separate little thing. It's so nice. And then she sent me a bonus croissant. <laughs> And it's making me miss Paris quite a bit because I sure did love eating croissants every single morning, but it's so cute. And again, like just, I'm gonna get it even a little closer. The detail is just so good. Like I just, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put the lemon one in. So where these go is this little plastic part goes just right in your headphone jack. There it is. It's so cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. I honestly think it goes really well with the blue and the green joy cons. I think that's just such a cute little contrast. Oh my gosh, I love the lemon. <laughs> it's so cute. Here's the strawberry and here's the croissant. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And it's like, little Switch charms are just such a nice way to like personalize your Switch too without like, you know, putting a skin on it or a big case. They just add so much nice little customization and they are so, so cute and just so high quality. But yeah, if you're in the market for any cute Switch charms or just any charms or even a pair of earrings, please go check out Augie Art Shop. She works so hard on her stuff and it's just such high quality and just so cute. She always has new stuff coming into her store and is always working on new ideas. So the link to her shop is also in the description. Please go check out Augie Art Shop. I highly, highly recommend it. All right, we have our first stack of games. So we're gonna start with the Switch games that I picked up recently. And this first one we're gonna go by pretty quick because I've already talked about it on the channel quite a bit. And that is of course, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So. I am in love with this game. I'm so close to beating it. I've really been taking my time with it because I've just been enjoying it so much, <laughs> but I'm really, really close. Like I'm probably gonna finish it this week and I don't wanna give my full thoughts on it, but I really, really like it. If you want an idea on some of my more specific thoughts, go watch my first thoughts video. I really recommend it. Or if you wanna see me unboxing this, go watch my Tears of the Kingdom unboxing. I talk about it a lot more there, but just know Tears of the Kingdom is great. So happy to have picked it up. <laughs> now this game, I'm going to recommend this to everybody. I really am. This game got overshadowed because it came out the same week as Tears of the Kingdom. And it's a completely different game from Tears of the Kingdom, of course. But this game means more to me 
than I can say, and that's Dokapon Kingdom. Connect! So Dokapon Kingdom was a game that came out for the Wii and the PlayStation 2, and it is dummy expensive to try to find now. I actually found a copy of the Wii version at GameStop back in like 2014, $20. You know how much that game is now? Like, usually more than 100, <laughs> which is ridiculous. But what Dokapon Kingdom is, it's basically Mario Party meets RPG. So you're battling against three other players or however many players and you're moving around on a board like you would do for any kind of board game based party game. But there are random encounters, there are boss battles, there's a story mode. <laughs> Dokapon Kingdom is the wackiest party game experience that you will ever have, but it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. When they announced that this was getting ported to the Switch, because what Dokapon Kingdom Connect is, it's a port of that Wii and PlayStation 2 version, but with internet capabilities. So I freaked out. <laughs> I absolutely freaked out. Not only because Dokapon was finally going to be accessible again for the general public to play, but because of the online functionality of it. Now you can match with random people and just play with whoever you want to play with online. You can play with your friends online. It's great. And honestly, the online stuff works really, really well. I streamed this a while back with my friend My170 on Twitch, and we didn't really have any lag issues. Like the game ran really, really smoothly, and it was the two of us playing along with a computer player. And I've watched other Twitch friends play this on stream. No lag, it's worked really, really well, and it's just great. Like, please get this game, <laughs> please. I need more people to play with, I love Dokapon Kingdom, and I really do recommend it. It's a really, really fun, strange, silly time. So get Dokapon Kingdom, please. So this is a digital game I picked up, and as you all know, I'm a big Xenoblade fan, so of course I had to get the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 DLC Future Redeemed when it came out. I played it, I loved it, I thought it was a great conclusion to the series, but that leads into my next physical pickup as well. I am really, planning on giving Xenoblade 2 another try this summer. After I finish Tears of the Kingdom, that's going to be my next big <laughs> gaming adventure, I think. So I decided to bite the bullet and finally also pick up the physical copy of Torna. I found it for a really good price. It is the PAL version. My copy of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is also the PAL version, so I figured it made sense to get this also as the PAL version rather than the US version. And also it was just way cheaper, but it was for such a good price. It was on sale. And there was a time where you really couldn't find Torna for very cheap. And I didn't want to miss out again. <laughs> I didn't want to miss out again knowing that I was going to play this, especially because people said that even if you didn't like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna is a little bit better in a lot of different regards too. So I'm really excited to give this a shot. Obviously I won't be playing it until after I play Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and kind of reformulate my opinions on that. But I'm excited to finally add this to the collection as well. And for the final Switch game, which is a game I actually didn't think was going to make it for this haul video, it is the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster 1 through 6 collection. I bought this on a whim and I honestly kept forgetting that I bought it. <laughs> so the hype around this game was crazy. This is the Play Asia release and the big drama was there's the Play Asia and then there was the one that you could only pre-order from the Square Enix website at a ridiculous time early in the morning. I obviously didn't get that one. I wasn't gonna try for that one. But when I knew that there was a Play Asia version coming out, I knew I wanted it sooner rather than later. So I bought it and it took a little longer to get here because it was in such high, demand. <laughs> it was in such high demand, but I'm really excited. This is getting me ever so closer to having all of the available Final Fantasy games on Switch on my Switch, which is cool. But the main reason I got it is because Final Fantasy 4 and 6 are two of my absolute favorite Final Fantasies, and I'm so happy to finally have them on the Switch. I think the Pixel Remaster is also kind of cool too. I like that it has you know, so many options to make it the original font, the original soundtracks, all of that which is a big step up from the PC version, I believe, where you couldn't change those features, which that's also part of the reason I held off from getting it on PC was so I could get it on Switch and have all of those features. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy to have this physically. So I'm glad this made it in time to be a part of this video. So I also wanted to talk about some of the Steam pickups I've acquired over the last little bit as well. When I did a kind of 
steam pickup thing when I did my desk setup video. People really, really liked it. So I was like, I'm gonna incorporate that a little bit in this one as well. So I have three games that I've recently picked up on Steam and you're gonna notice a theme between all of them. They're all very cozy. <laughs> So the first game that I picked up was Mail Time. Now, Mail Time was one of my most anticipated releases of 2023. And I played it and finished it on stream during the Wholesome Direct week. And it was such a little joy, minus a few things. I really loved the game. I loved the environment. I loved the characters, the writing, the objective, everything. I didn't realize it was going to be so motion sick inducing, unfortunately. So it was a bit of a struggle to finish it only because I did not feel good playing it, but it was really cute. And I'm glad that I was able to like go through it and experience it because it's a really, really nice little game. There are some weird bugs here and there still, so I know they're still working on trying to fix all of those, but it's a really, really cute game. And if you like platformers and just cute aesthetics, I really recommend it. The writing is hilarious and the music is like so, so good. I didn't expect the music in Mail Time to be that good, but it's really, really nice. So big recommend on Mail Time for sure. But if you, you get easily motion sick like me, maybe take some Dramamine first. Now the next pickup is another Wholesome Direct alum, and that was Epico, which is a beekeeping simulator. And it's really, really cute. It's got a really cute pixel art style. And honestly, the color palette for Epico is so, relaxing and nice and it plays ambient sounds in the background where you care for your bees. It's really interesting. I didn't get to play a ton of it, but I do think it's a game I'm gonna ultimately go back to. It seems like a really nice game to play at night when you're trying to wind down and stuff and it was really nice. I'm really glad I got it and it was on sale for so cheap that it was an easy pickup. And lastly, this was a game that was announced at the Wholesome Direct and that is Smushy Come Home. Now I haven't been able to play this game yet, but it makes me so happy to see it literally everywhere in cozy gamer Instagram land. It's so <laughs> nice because it's it's just great to see an indie game so quickly get so much recognition. Like Mail Time, it's a platformer and you're a little mushroom friend and it just looks really, really cute. This was one that absolutely stood out to me during the Wholesome Direct, especially because it was released the day of, which is just really cool. So I'm excited to eventually dive into that one as well. Now we get into the more retro area of things. Well, this next one isn't really retro, but it's still not a console, you know, that's at the forefront of everybody's mind. But this is a really exciting pickup. <laughs> it's Tomodachi Life for the 3DS. This was a game that when I did my 3DS and Wii U pickup, I wanted to get this game then so badly. I have so many memories of one of my friends having this game and just making everybody she knew and putting us in funny situations. And it was the funniest game. It was the funniest, funniest game. <laughs> I always wanted it, but just there were other 3DS games that were a bit more higher priority. And now that like I'm going back and collecting more games for the 3DS, I knew I had to pick this one up. I really, really did. And I found this at a game store and it was a ridiculously good price. I've seen the price of Tomodachi Life go up and down like really frequently. When I was originally doing the buying for the 3DS and Wii U video, this was like, 40 bucks, I think, brand new. And then some used copies were like 35. Some used copies were like 50. Like it was all over the place. I'm pretty sure I got this one for about 30 bucks, which was really nice just given the quality. It's a really, really clean case. It's really nice. And not only that, but it's absolutely complete too. With even, <laughs> funny enough, the uh, move-in demo completely untouched, which you can't use it now, but I thought that was just a really, really cool relic. And of course the cart looks super good. I'm so happy to have Tomodachi Life in my collection. I screamed when I saw this. I absolutely did. I was so surprised that nobody had picked this up yet. And yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to have this. I don't know when I'm gonna have the chance to play it, hopefully soon, just even for a little bit to get a taste of the hilarity that this game has. So this was a great pickup. <laughs> and now we get into the DS games. And I had talked about some of the games that I needed to rebuy for my collection in my DS collection video. And that's what three of these pickups are, which is so exciting that I was able to just get these off of the list ASAP. So the first one is one that I have the case for, but needed to rebuy the game. And it's nothing too exciting, but I was still happy to pick it up for so cheap. And that's Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. <laughs> so I said this in my DS collection video. I don't think this was a good game, but I now have it <sighs> complete in box, which is perfect. See, and now 
And now, and now, boop, completed. <laughs> <laughs> which is just such a nice feeling. It really, really is. So even though I'll probably never play this game ever again, because I think I had my fill of it from childhood, I at least have this completed once more. And another one of the same kind, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. This one, I almost didn't walk out of the store with. I almost didn't walk out of the store with that one either, but I was like, is it too soon to buy these? Like, is I feel like I'm really completing things here, but this one was a really nice pickup. The thing about The Complete Saga is it doesn't really jump around in price. Like for Dead Man's Chest, I got that game for $3.99, I think. <laughs> it was very, very cheap. And this, I've seen it at the same price loose as I have completed box. So this I was able to pick up for $7.99 and it's about $9.99 to get it with the box. So I, I'm happy I was able to get a few bucks off at the very least just to complete it. And they actually had a ton of these too. It was at the same store that I got that one at. And they had a ton of them, but this was the cleanest cart. So I was really happy that I found one that was not tainted by random goo like many, many used video games are. So that's another one complete in box for the DS collection. So the only loose game that I have to buy for the DS now that I already have the box for is Harvest Moon Sunshine Island. So we're getting close. That one's gonna be a tough one to find though. And I was able to re-buy one of the games I was missing complete in box. And this isn't gonna be exciting to really anybody, but this is really exciting to me. And it's the Pets Wild Animals Dolphins game. I have so many good memories with this game. And this was another one I saw it at the store and I screamed. Not because I was shocked that nobody had seen it, but I was more shocked at how good condition this was in. The case is pretty clean. Like there are a few smudges that I had to clean off, but otherwise it's pretty good and it's complete too, which is just always a nice touch. Like it's never really a requirement, but I really do like having the manuals. I think it's just kind of a nice thing. But this game was hilarious to me as a kid. I loved it. You're managing kind of like an aquarium park and just training dolphins, feeding dolphins, and I loved this game. I thought it was so cute. So I picked this up for $4 <laughs> and I'm really happy about that. So yay, I'm just, I'm, I was so happy to pick this one up. I know it's a small thing, but it was a collection win for me. We're so close to like getting my whole childhood collection back and then we can really start adding some new stuff too. Like this one, which actually was not on my DS pickup list, but I saw it, it was for such a good price and I thought it was gonna look kind of cute on the shelf. And that's Yoshi's Island DS. I did not grow up with this game. I've never played Yoshi's Island DS and I've heard really, really good things, but I think it's just really, really cute. So I know there's one for the 3DS, but this was at such a good price. And again, really good quality, good clean cart all of the manuals even the club nintendo and nintendo power um inserts were in there which again i just it's such like a little nostalgic thing that i really really like when games come with that kind of stuff and so here's the inside too again like i'm so fortunate to be going to game stores that keep the carts in such good condition too because there's nothing worse than like a grimy ds cart <laughs> But that was a really, really nice pickup. I think I was able to get it for 16 and I was seeing it for about 25 complete in box on price charting. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. And even though I wasn't intending to buy it, I'm really happy that I did. All right, now two games for a console. I don't have. Why, you may ask, did I buy two games for a console I don't have? Well, it's, it's because they're Harvest Moon. So I got Harvest Moon, Save the Homeland for the PlayStation 2 and Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life Special Edition, also for the PlayStation 2. So I have said recently, and if you just watched my Harvest Moon Story of Seasons tier list, I mentioned this in there too, if there's a series I'm going to collect for, I really want to collect for Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons. It's a series that means a lot to me for a lot of different reasons. It's been there my whole life and I just really love it. So I picked up these two. They were both so ridiculously cheap that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. And so Save the Homeland, I was able to get for seven bucks. Unfortunately, it is not complete, but the disc is in really good condition. I haven't tried it out yet, just because again, I, I don't have a PlayStation 2, but I have tried out A Wonderful Life, and this is 
complete. So it has the manual and it's so cool looking at the manual. And I played this when I was over at TJ's as he does have a PlayStation 2. So I was like, what one of the two do you want to play? And he picked this one. So we started with this one because he's not a big Harvest Moon person, but he's learning. He's learning. So <laughs> the thing about the special edition of A Wonderful Life is there's a lot of weird bugs and stuff and it does not run super well. But I'm just, I'm really happy to have this one too, because there's a lot of extra weird things in it too over the other two versions. So I thought it was a good thing. And then Save the Homeland, I have a lot of really good memories playing this with a friend growing up. I'd love to pick up the manual at some point in time so I can officially complete it, but I'm just really happy to get these. These were a steal. This one was only 10, so pretty darn good IMO. And you know, PlayStation 2s aren't that hard to buy or I'll just borrow TJ's, so. <laughs> And just while we're on the topic of Harvest Moon, I've been sitting on this for a while and I've never gotten to show it off. So I figured I'd show it off, but I was at a used bookstore and I wasn't really looking for anything in particular, but I saw this guide for a stupidly low price, <laughs> absolutely ridiculously low. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. You know, I'll pick that up. Like it's an okay condition, but it's six bucks, you know? Come to find out recently that this Prima Guide in okay condition is worth $80. And that is the Harvest Moon Back to Nature Prima Guide. So as you can kind of see, it's a little beat up. Chick stick farmers, of course. Um, it's a little beat up. There are some creases. I had to get a big, weird, unknown stain off of the front of it. <laughs> but it came up really easily. The pages are pretty much all nice. There's a coffee stain in one of these on a page somewhere, but otherwise the pages are all intact. Everything's there. It's just a little creased in the front and back, but yeah, I, I haven't really been able to find many of these for sale, but all the ones that I have have been really, really expensive. 80 was the lowest that I found for books in about the same condition. And yeah, I bought this for $6. So they didn't really know what they were sitting on, probably because they didn't really know what this was because on the inside, all it says is six, RPG and that's it because it was with the D&D &D books. So I don't know. I thought this was a great steal though. And even though I don't have a physical copy of Back to Nature, Back to Nature is a pretty darn good Harvest Moon game in my opinion. And I'm really happy to have this Prima guide. I just, I think that's cool. I love collecting old Prima guides. I think they're really fun. And that's just a good one to have for the collection. So we're down to our final two games and both of them are GameCube games. And both of them have very special things about them too. So the very first one is kind of a game that I bought as a joke, but is a very important and very fun pickup for me. And that's Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. So I never had this game growing up, but if you know me personally, you know I'm a big fan of Donkey Konga or other weird rhythm games. And this is no exception. I played this with my cousins growing up and I was obsessed. I was like, oh, did you bring the Mario Dance Dance Revolution game every time they came home? And the answer was normally no, because this plus the dance pad was a lot to bring and they'd rather play Fire Emblem or other such games. But I was obsessed with this game. I thought it was so weird and it's true. It's, it's really weird. Whoever decided to do a DDR Mario game with a story and plot, and all of like just dance battles and putting Bowser and Waluigi through dance battles. I mean, you know, I think there's a reason they never did it again, <laughs> but I thought this was a really, really cool pickup and it wasn't that expensive. This is another game that I've kind of seen float around in price, especially in comparison to other GameCube games. Sometimes it's really expensive. Sometimes it's really cheap. Sometimes it's cheap to just get the game. Sometimes it's cheap to get the dance pad. Yeah, but this one I picked up for not that much money. I think 25, 25, which I thought was pretty okay. Once again, has the manual, the disc is in good condition, all of that stuff. Now you might be thinking, but if you bought the game, how are you to dance? Well, I bought this too. I, this is, this is the official dance mat for the game. I actually have not taken out of the plastic wrap. So we're going to do that now. Um, this was from another more local game store than the other ones actually. And I saw the dance mat first and I was like, you know what? I should just pick up the dance mat <laughs> because it was a really, really, really good price. And it's in a pretty decent condition. There are a few rips here and there. And it's also really dusty. So maybe I shouldn't really open this up, but um, it's in decent, decent condition. There's a little yellowing, but ta-da, ta-da. Here it is, here's Mario. So. <laughs> 
then I saw the game on their shelf and I was like, this is fate. I'm just buying both of them. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm probably, this is gonna be something I do for stream 100%. Um, so stay tuned for that. Go follow me on Twitch if you wanna see me do Mario DDR. But I was really happy to pick this up. I love wacky GameCube accessories and stuff like that. So this was a hilarious pickup and I'm really glad that I own it finally after all this time. And our final game, which is kind of maybe one of the coolest things of this haul. I never anticipated buying this, but I saw it for a really good price. It was the same day I bought Tomodachi Life actually. Oh, hi Luna. Hi Luna. My cat's here. <laughs> so my cat's in the room. So if you hear noises, she's just investigating the dance mat. But so this final GameCube pickup is not something that I anticipated picking up, but it was a really, really cool thing. And I just, I couldn't turn it down. So at the same store that I bought the Tomodachi Life and a lot of other of the DS games in this haul, they had Harvest Moon Grand Bazaar for the, th for the DS. And I was so excited because I had been looking for it for a good price for so long. And I finally found it. And then we were kind of walking around and I saw this game, a sealed GameCube game for only 40 bucks. I think it was about $40, but it was a game that I had always wanted to pick up. And even though the sealed part didn't matter too much to me, I still thought it was really cool. But I turned myself down because I was like, no, I'm getting this Harvest Moon game. Come to find out they didn't have the actual game anywhere. They only had the box and they couldn't find the game for Grand Bazaar. So they were about to put it away and I was like, you know what? Get me that game. And that is a sealed copy of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I don't know the last time I've seen a sealed <laughs> copy of a GameCube game. There is, the reason it was so low is because there is a tear in the back. I don't know if you can see it right there, but there's a little tear, but otherwise, the packaging is pretty good. Like the wrap itself is pretty scratched up, but of course the game underneath is just fine. And of course I rattle it around and I know there's a game in there for sure, but I wasn't expecting to pick up a sealed GameCube game, but I'm really glad I did. Now, am I gonna open it? I haven't decided. I think I probably will because I would like to play Crystal Chronicles and I heard that the Switch port wasn't that good, but it's also really cool just having a sealed GameCube game. Again, I don't know the last time that I had one of these, so. This was just a great find for a great price. And I know if I do open it, I'm gonna savor every moment because that's probably gonna be the last time I ever get to open an unopened GameCube game. And it will it would be the first time in like 15 years? I don't know, like a long time, a really, really long time. But this was a great pickup and I'm really happy to have this a part of my collection. I never intended to buy more GameCube games and the fact that I had two in this haul, that's really cool, That's that's really awesome, so. Very happy about both. Oh my gosh, we made it to the end. As I said, that was a big haul, but we're finally done. But I do anticipate there being more, especially as this year is full of upcoming Switch titles and my hunt for some older games is going to continue, of course. So I'm sure I'm gonna have more pickups as the months go along. But please let me know in the comments below which one of these pickups was your favorite and what game should I pick up next? I'm always down for suggestions for any kind of console. Yeah, I, I love knowing this kind of stuff. But also let me know if you like these longer hauls or if you prefer more frequent, shorter ones. Anyway, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see here, maybe consider liking the video, subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love to have you a part of our community. And yeah, but all right, everybody, until the next one, goodbye.